Hi everyone. In the previous part of bacterial photosynthesis, we had gone through the photosynthetic pigments and the photosynthetic apparatus in detail. Now, in this part, we will discuss about the phases of photosynthesis, where particularly we will discuss about the light phase. And we are also going to discuss about the oxygenic photosynthesis in detail in this part. In the part 2, that is the next continuous part, we are going to discuss about the anoxygenic photosynthesis. Let's begin. So, as we have already discussed that the process of conversion of light energy to chemical energy is going to be defined as photosynthesis. The process of conversion of light energy to chemical energy is called photosynthesis. And the photosynthesis is going to have how many phases? Two phases. What is the first phase? One is called as light phase and the second one is called as dark phase. The light phase is also going to be called as light reaction or photophosphorylation. So we know that wherever we will get the phosphorylation there the ATP synthesis occurring. In the respiration topic, we had gone through the oxidative phosphorylation and substrate level phosphorylation in detail. So, go, you can go through that videos where you can have a clear idea about photophosphorylation too. Okay. So, in this part, we are majorly dealing with the light phase or light reaction. And in the subsequent uh, parts, we will discuss about the dark phase or the fixation or assimilation of carbon dioxide in microorganisms okay let's begin with the light phase so the light phase is also called as light reaction or photophosphorylation so this is a first phase of photosynthesis and here the light energy is being converted into chemical energy so that chemical energy will be in the form of ATP Along with the generation of this ATP, the reduction of NADP is also occurring into the form of NADPH. Okay, and together of this ATP and NADPH are collectively called as assimilatory power. That means in the light phase, we are having the generation of assimilatory power. What is an assimilatory power? The collective of ATP and NADPH is called as assimilatory power. And this assimilatory power is going to be required in the second phase for the fixation of atmospheric carbon dioxide and converting into the form of carbohydrate. So this is all the things that are happening in the light phase. That means the generation of the chemical energy as well as the reduction energy that is NADPH which together we call it as assimilatory power. Okay. So now the two main photo uh, synthesis types that occur in the bacteria is going to be of oxygenic photosynthesis and anoxygenic photosynthesis. The oxygenic photosynthesis is going to be of uh, generate oxygen example is cyanobacteria and the one which do not uh, produce this oxygen are called as anoxygenic photosynthesis example are the purple and the green bacteria which do not evolve the oxygen during the photosynthesis process. So, depending upon the oxygen evolution, we are having the two types that is oxygenic photosynthesis, then second type is anoxygenic photosynthesis. For the most part, oxygenic phototrophs have chlorophyll, whereas anoxygenic phototrophs have bacteriochlorophyll. Remember, the oxygenic phototrophs, uh, that means the one which performs this oxygenic release of oxygen during photosynthesis, are all going to have the chlorophyll as a pigment an example is the cyanobacteria whereas the one which are not going to have the evolution of the oxygen during the oxygenic photosynthesis uh, those are oxygenic phototrophs example purple and green bacteria possess the bacteriochlorophyll okay so this is what you have to remember and then coming to the oxygenic photosynthesis so, where uh, we are going to have the study of these oxygenic photosynthesis, this is the organism called cyanobacteria. Okay. So, we are going to take the cyanobacteria as the best example in studying the oxygenic photosynthesis. 
So this uh, cyanobacteria, also in all other uh, phototropic eukaryotes also, we can see this uh, oxygenic photosynthesis. So these uh, use water as a source of electron donor to reduce NADP to NADPH, releasing the molecular oxygen. That's why we call it as oxygenic photosynthesis as a byproduct. And this type is called as oxygenic photosynthesis. And the oxygenic photosynthesis that is occurring in the cyanobacteria is going to have the two types of photosystems. How many types? Two types, that is photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. Let's see the light reaction, that is the first phase of uh, photosynthesis in cyanobacteria. Not only in the cyanobacteria, other phototrophic eukaryotes also possess the same mechanism. So there are two different uh, but interconnected photosystems like uh, photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. The photosystem 1 absorbs, so here you can see, here are the things we are having. So this is going to be of your photosystem 1 and this is going to be of your photosystem 2. Okay, this is photosystem 2 and this is photosystem 1. So how many types of photosystems are involved? Two types of photosystems. One is photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. The photosystem 1 absorbs the longer wavelength that is a far red light and funnels its energy to a special reaction center called chlorophyll a molecule called as P700. So here is the reaction center of the chlorophyll molecule called as P700. The P700 signifies that this reaction center absorbs the light at a wavelength of 700 nanometer, which is most efficient, uh, efficient or effective. Whereas the photosystem 2 absorbs the light at shorter wavelength, that is near to the red light, and transfers its energy to the reaction center of chlorophyll molecules called as P680. So here the photosystem 1 is 700 and the second one is the P680. So together of this photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 are involved individually as a uh, combined together in the generation of our ATP as well as the NADPH. Okay, And this whole mechanism can also be called as Z scheme also. The other name of this uh, combined photosynthesis, oxygenic photosynthesis can also be called as Z scheme. So as it is representing the like Z, we also call this as Z scheme. Okay, And in uh, cyanobacteria, we are going to have the two types of uh, phosphorylation that is photophosphorylation one is going to be called as cyclic photophosphorylation and second one is going to be called as non-cyclic photophosphorylation so i will tell you individually then we'll have the combined of uh, saying this one okay so let's begin with the cyclic photophosphorylation so here in the cyclic photophosphorylation the photosystem one is involved what is the photosystem one the P701 is going to be called as photosystem uh, 1, which is going to uh, funnel the light energy to the reaction center. So this is our reaction center. And these chlorophyll uh, electrons are going to be excited. And as a result, its reductional potential becomes very negative. Okay, The excited or high energy electron of P700 is captured by a special type of the chlorophyll A, molecule and then uh, an iron sulfur protein FES the electron is eventually transferred to ferredoxin okay now the latter transfers electrons to a cyclic route through a series of uh, electron carriers like cytochrome B563 and then plastoquinone then cytochrome B6 so we are having a pool here cytochrome F, then plastocyanin, and then finally back to the oxidized 700. So here you can see in detail about this. So again it comes back. So here, uh, forget about this one. Okay. So here you can see the electrons are getting excited by taking the absorption of the light and they will move to the first one is a chlorophyll A molecule 
and then the iron sulfur protein molecules okay the electron is eventually transferred to the ferredoxin that is fd which is going to transfer the electrons to cytochrome b uh, that is 563 and then plastoquinone that is a quinone pool containing all these things and then moving to the cytochrome b6 and f okay and then plastocyanin and from the plastocyanin it will come back to the oxidized p700 so as the electrons are travel in a cyclic path so starting from here coming here again it is coming here this kind of the that means originating from the p700 and ele electrons are again reaching the p700 the process is called as cyclic photophosphorylation in which how many photosystems are involved only one photosystem is involved and during the cyclic photophosphorylation atp is generated at the region of uh, cytochrome b6 so here is the region where we are going to have the synthesis of atp okay so this is all uh, about the cyclic photophosphorylation where the electrons that was originated from p700 comes back to the p700 and generates the atp this is called as cyclic photophosphorylation okay now let's move to the second type of photophosphorylation that is non cyclic photophosphorylation in this photosystem both one and two are involved remember in the cyclic we had only one type but here it is going to possess the both the types so let's see so here you can see this is photosystem 2 sorry 1 and this is 2 so the reduction potential of p680 chlorophyll a molecule of photosystem 2 is very electropositive and slow uh, slightly more positive than that of the water couple so this facilitates the first step in oxygenic electron flow so that means the water molecule is going to split and releasing the oxygen that's why we call this as oxygenic photosynthesis so what happens because of this uh, oxygen electron flow the splitting of water called as photolysis of water okay and we are getting the protons as well as the oxygen and the electrons that were released are going to be absorbed by the p680 that is photosystem 2 now the p680 is now excited and reduces the pheophytin molecule which is a chlorophyll a without mag that is magnesium atom okay that is going to be called as pheophytin what is a pheophytin the pheophytin is a chlorophyll pigment without the magnesium atom at the center okay now the electrons subsequently travel through quinone then the cytochrome b complex and plastocyanin and cytochrome b6 okay and then uh, it is going to uh, at the cytochrome b6 you are going to have the generation of atp so here it will be more clear for you so here is the thing so it is going to have the pheophytin then the quinone and then you are having the cytochrome b6 where atp is being generated here at this this position and then you are going to have the movement to the cytochrome f and then plastocyanin and the later donates electrons to the p700 that is a photosystem 1 now from here the electrons is accepted by the oxidized reaction center chlorophyll a p1 that is photosystem 1 or p700 which has previously absorbed the uh, light quanta and becomes the steps lead to the reduction of nadp that means it is going to move to the uh, iron sulfur protein then ferredoxin then it is not going back okay don't uh, look at this one it is not going back so it just comes like this and here the nadp is going to be converted into nadph so this is what happening so it never goes back okay so it starts from the p6ad and ends here with the generation of this nadph so that's how as the electrons are not coming back to the 6ad we are going to call this as non cyclic photophosphorylation so here we are having the generation of the atp as well as the nadph that is assimilatory power is going to be generated okay so this uh, is all about the oxygenic photosynthesis where we are having the two types that is cyclic as well as the non cyclic 
In the cyclic, we are having only the involvement of uh, P700, that is photosystem 1, whereas in the non-cyclic, both the P700 and the P680 are involved, where the electrons will not return back to the photosystem 2, where it was started. Okay, so this is all about the oxygenic photosynthesis. Then we will discuss about the anoxygenic photosynthesis in the next part. Thank you.